Welcome to this month's edition of What's New for Apps Admins, where we cover the new features in Google Apps that have rolled out over the last month. My name is Barry Schmel, and I'm with the Google for Work training team, and I'll be sharing with you the October updates. Let's look at this month's agenda. We'll start with our headline news, talk about the admin-specific updates, some changes to the Drive features and to Hangouts, and some exciting Google for Education updates, and finally, our trailing news about a recent consumer update. And now for the headline news. Hot off the presses is the new Google Apps Administrator Fundamentals course. This is an online course for Google Apps admins just getting started. It has videos to walk you through common scenarios, exercises to practice new skills, and quizzes to test your knowledge. Check out the course on your desktop or mobile device. This course also prepares you to take the Certified Google Apps Administrator exam. Find out more at the admin certification site, certification.googleapps.com admin. Let's look at the admin updates. And in October, we saw some great updates. The first one is restore deleted drive in Gmail data. So if a person deletes important data, admins can restore their drive and or Gmail data from up to 25 days. This launch also adds the ability to perform data restores for up to 10 people simultaneously. Previously, admins could only restore an individual's drive data. Let's look at this in the admin console. Start by selecting users, and then select the user that you want to restore their data for. I'm going to select Betty. And I'm going to select the Restore Data option. And now I can specify the date range. I can go back up to 25 days, which is what I'm going to do, and select today's date. And now I can either restore her drive data or her Gmail data. For now, I'm going to restore her Gmail data and select Restore Data. Okay. And once this is restored, it will appear in the user's inbox. Another new feature is that you can now select up to 10 users simultaneously. and then go to the Restore Data menu and repeat the same task. We can select the date range and whether we want to restore their drive data or Gmail data. I also like to point out that if you select more than 10 users, notice that the Restore Data menu disappears. Do you see that? When I have 10, it appears right here. And when I select more than 10, it disappears. I want to point that out to you because this way you won't call support and think that this is a bug. This is actually a feature that after you select 10 users, you can no longer restore them simultaneously. You only can do up to 10 at a time. So when might an admin need to restore data for a user? Remember, if a user moves a file to Drive or deletes a message from the Gmail inbox, the item moves to the trash where the user can easily recover the item his or herself. However, when the user or the system empties the trash, the item is actually deleted and the user can no longer recover it. So this is when the admin would be needed to restore the deleted data for the user for up to 25 days. Also, I'd like to point out you can check out the update announcements and help articles and other resources by following the links below this slide in the presentation. So you'll need actually a copy of the presentation to look at those links to those resources. Improvements to Email Log Search in Admin Console. Located under Reports, Email Log Search gives ads admins the ability to sift through delivery logs for their domains and evaluate message transit. The log is helpful for troubleshooting mail delivery issues. Some of the search log enhancements include that you can export results to Google Sheets. Um, it displays compliance rules, message transit time, and the message detail labels. Let's look at this in the Admin Console. First, let's select Reports, select Audit, and then we'll see the Email Log Search option. We can select a predefined date range, or you could specify your own date range. I'm going to go back since uh, the last seven days, and I can enter the sender. In my case, I'm looking for mail that was sent from the admin user, and then click Search. It can take a few seconds for the search to actually occur. And notice that the messages appear. I'm going to select the first message here. And notice that I now see the message details. It's important that you note that we do not actually see the content of the message that the user sent. 
only the important header information. If we click on the recipient details, I want you to notice that we see the policies that were evaluated for this particular user. Aggregate reports added to Admin Console reporting. Aggregate reports are designed to provide domain-level trends across multiple apps. Admins can select their favorite reports for regular tracking. Let's look at this in the Admin Console. Select Reports. Select Aggregate Reports. And notice the My Reports menu that allows you to select the different reports that you prefer. You can go to the Select Reports menu and select and deselect your preferred reports. Notice I deselected the two-step verification report and it no longer appears in my reports menu. I can also export the data either to a Google Sheet or download it to a CSV file. And speaking of reports, we saw the Admin SDK Reports API limit extended to 15 months. On September 2nd, 2014, we officially extended the reporting period for these APIs from six months to 15 months. The full 15 months, or 450 days, history will be available on May 30th, 2015, with the earliest report data of March 2014. Let's look at the drive updates, starting with auto-upgrade to new Google Forms. We began auto-upgrading all legacy forms created in the old version of Google Forms, those are forms that were created prior to February 2013 to the new version. Rapid release of the rollout started October 20th, 2014, and scheduled release is for early November. All responses from the old forms will migrate seamlessly to the new version. After the upgrade is complete, a notification will appear when an editor opens any upgraded form, indicating that the upgrade has occurred. This is also the time that the editor can implement some of the new features, like the customized themes. In October, we also saw add-ons for Google Forms. Add-on for Google Forms are new tools created by the developer partners that bring even more features to your surveys, just like add-ons for Docs and Sheets. I think of add-ons like plugins or extensions to Google Docs, Sheets, and now Forms. Note, for users to install add-ons, the admin must turn on the drive setting allow users to install Google Docs add-ons in the Admin Console. Let's look at how you turn on or off add-ons in the Admin Console. Now, since Drive is one of the core services, we go to the Google Apps and select Drive. If we look at the general settings and we scroll to the bottom, you'll notice that we can select Allow Users to Install Google Doc Add-ons. We can select it or deselect it. That turns it on and turns it off. When you make a change, you must save the change. Please note that it can take up to about one hour until this change is available to your users. Speaking of add-ons, let's see how much more powerful they are now. Installable and time-based triggers are now in add-ons. Add-ons can provide even more functionality with the addition of installable and time-based triggers. So what does that mean exactly? Installable triggers take action when an event occurs, like opening up a file or submitting a form, while time-based triggers take action at a specific time or recurring interval, like every hour. Now, in the sample data you see for the add-on, you see the app script function for a time-based trigger of every six hours. Your users don't need to do anything. This is all part of the add-on. Manage versions for non-Google files in the new Google Drive. You can see previous versions of files in Google Drive even if they weren't created in a Google format. You can also delete and download previous versions or upload a new version. In Google Drive, simply right-click or use the More Actions menu and select the Manage Versions. Let's look at this in Google Drive. I'm going to select my MS Word document that I uploaded to Google Drive. Notice it is not in a Google Docs format. It's a MS Word document. And if I right-click, I can go to Manage Versions, or I can go to the More Actions menu and select Manage Versions. And you can see the various versions that I've uploaded of this document. Notice it includes the name of the user and the date and the time when that update occurred. You can also take several actions. You can upload a new version, owners and editors only. You can actually go to the Action menu here, 
and you can delete it, you can download it, or you can also have it be kept forever. When you select keep forever, it will never be deleted until you actually delete that document. And the reason for that is older versions of your files are going to be automatically deleted after 30 days or 100 versions, unless you tell it specifically to keep that version forever. We do this because older files, older versions, take up storage space. So we automatically delete those to help you keep your storage space. Incoming item view added to Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides apps on iOS. We all know sharing and editing together are important parts of working with Docs editors. And that's why we're making it easy to see all of the files that have been shared with you in the new incoming view. Even people using Google Docs, Sheets, and Slide apps for iPhone and iPad will now see a new incoming view added to the navigation panel, very similar to the one in Drive today. The incoming allows a number of actions that include sharing, download, moving to a folder in Drive, printing, as well as removing the file. To download these apps or get the latest versions, download an update from the App Store by following the links below this slide in the presentation. Let's look at Hangouts updates. New Hangouts Chrome app. When you're chatting with your friends and family, you want your conversations easily accessible, not buried in the browser window. In October, we launched a new Hangouts Chrome app for Chrome OS and Windows platforms. A simpler, faster way to use Hangouts on your computer alongside whatever else you're doing. It has an updated UI and brings the best of Hangouts to your desktop. Some of the improvements include a streamlined design that keeps your chats accessible without getting in the way of everything else. Works outside of your browser so your chats are easily available, not tucked away inside a window. Includes all the video and voice features you're used to in Hangouts. And download the Hangouts Chrome app today and get started with a new experience tailor-made for your desktop. If you're already using the Hangouts Chrome extension on your Chrome OS or Windows computer, You'll also see a promo to try the new app over the next few weeks. To learn more, visit the Hangouts Help Center. Let's see what's new in Google for Education. Announcing Drive for Education. Universities and schools continue to tell us that they want learning without limits. So in October, we announced the Drive for Education, which will be coming to all Google Apps for Education schools at no charge. In the coming months, New features will be added that include unlimited storage, no more worrying about how much space you have left, or about which users need more gigabytes. Google Apps Vault, which is our solution for search and e-discovery for compliance needs. This will be coming free to all Apps for Education users by the end of the year. Enhanced auditing and controls. Reporting and auditing tools and an audit API easily let you see the activity of a file. You can gain insights from new activity and audit reports for Google Drive. These features are also on the way. The specific launch timeline information will be added to the Google Apps release calendar once available. Check out the update announcements, help articles, and other resources by following the links below this slide in the presentation. And new features in Google Classroom. Google Classroom launched this summer to make Google Apps for Education even simpler saving teachers time and making it easier to collaborate with students. In October, we launched five improvements to Classroom, focusing on the things educators and students around the world tell us were most important to them. Groups integration. If you already have a Google Group set up for your class, you can now use that group to invite students to Classroom. And if your school uses tools like School Directory Sync, or your Google Apps Administrator can sync your school's class rosters, from your student information system into Google Groups, helping you use these groups to set up a class in second. Mark assignments as done. Not all assignments require students to submit work online, like reading a chapter or conducting an experiment. So we've added the ability for students to simply mark assignments as done if there's nothing to turn in. Export all grades. Teachers will now have the ability to download grades for all assignments at once, making it easier to export assignments to any gradebook. Sorting. Teachers can now choose to sort students by first or last name, depending on their needs. And greater teacher controls. Teachers can now set permissions for whether or not their class can post or comment in the stream. They can mute individual students from posting or commenting, and can even view previously deleted items in the stream. 
We hope that these updates make Classroom even more efficient and effective to use with your students. We'll be making regular updates throughout the year, so keep submitting feedback and stay tuned. And now for our trailing news, a consumer update. Inbox by Gmail. In October, we introduced something new called Inbox. Years in the making, Inbox is by the same people who brought you Gmail, but it's not Gmail. It's a completely different type of inbox designed to focus on what really matters. Today we get more email now than ever before. Important information is buried inside messages, and our most important tasks can slip through the cracks, especially when we're working on our phones. For many of us, dealing with email has become a daily chore that distracts from what we really need to do, rather than helping us get these things done. Here are some ways that Inbox will work for you. It bundles similar types of mail together, highlights the important info at a glance, makes it easy to focus on your priorities by letting you add your own reminders, provides assists to help you get tasks done, and allows you to snooze away emails and reminders. Now here are some key points about the Inbox rollout. Number one, Inbox is for consumer accounts only, like users at gmail.com. Google Apps users will not be getting an invite to use Inbox, only the consumer Gmail users. Gmail is going to work side by side and continues to be the tool of choice for business needs. Google is evaluating using Inbox for Google Apps customers, but nowhere near bringing it to the market, as many compliance, privacy, SLAs, and policy features aren't there yet. And did I mention Google Apps users will not be getting an invite to use Inbox? only consumer Gmail users. So for all of our Google Apps customers listening, I'd like to say, while we continue to develop Inbox by Gmail, at this time it's not available to Google Apps customers. We love Gmail and we're going to continue to invest in it for the hundreds of millions of people who rely on it every day, including our business, education, and government customers. Remember to check out the update announcements, help articles, and other resources by following the links below this slide in my presentation. And lastly, we want you to stay informed. If you're looking for a full rundown of all the features released last month, then check out the Google Apps release calendar where you can see the date and type for each release. Or alternatively, check out the What's New in Google Apps newsletter for a full rundown of all the features and more info on what they mean. You can find this newsletter on the What's New page above the release calendar. So that's it for this month's edition of What's New for Apps Admins, October 2014. Please subscribe to the channel and leave any questions and comments below. Thanks and catch you all next month.